Thank you. Um, really glad to be here. And this is our first time we will be presenting uh, kind of alone with MIBM uh, being on a site. And I still feel that we are just learning how to walk. But I will try to summarize where we are in terms of the technical aspect challenges and also the science part. Um, so as was mentioned earlier, obviously it's uh, built on Boeing. Uh, IBM has been running it since 2004. And this first graph really illustrates uh, kind of how number of devices, number of members, and overall runtime that it supports as obviously devices change over the years uh, has been cumulative. And we have almost uh, two and a half million years uh, worth of uh, CPU hours uh, donated. <clears throat> so one of the aspects is when I, we started, uh, my group started uh, uh, two projects. So one is still running, mapping cancer markers, before it was uh, help conquer cancer. And at the time, IBM, first of all, had a different logo, and uh, there was a lot of uh, outreach and, and support for uh, other teams to join and so on. And the first photo is really from the time when it was a fundraising event for Princess Margaret Cancer Center, and IBM World Community Grid team participated in it, not only as a co-sponsor, but also actually as a lot of them as cyclists, uh, uh, trying to fundraise. Over the years, as we kind of grew the team from running a project to running the whole grid, obviously the challenges started because we don't have a corporate sponsor per se, but distributed one of the uh, very lucrative company from Kingston, Ontario, uh, helped us to go through the uh, first year or second year, uh, 2022, in terms of the finances. Important aspect was also uh, support of SharkNet, which is part of the high performance computing network uh, within Canada that uh, landed us space uh, where we can run the servers from. And obviously we run still on the IBM in terms of the whole setup for the World Community Grid. So the current projects are still as we inherited from IBM, uh, starting with the open pandemics, African rainfall projects, mass childhood cancer, uh, help stop tuberculosis and our mapping cancer marker. Based on the countries where they come from, obviously it spans relatively good chunk of the world, but more can be done. And we still continue, although with challenges, to try to adhere to that this is still going to be free to uh, individual projects. But it's challenging. Obviously, it's easier to raise money for your own projects than to raise money to support multiple different projects. So the challenges are in terms of the infrastructure, uh, because we cannot afford to run it on IBM Blue Cloud, where it was running before. We had to run it on the servers that we actually didn't have, but eventually got some older uh, Dell blades on which we run, um, not ideal match. We had to change a lot of the things, which obviously breaks a lot of the automation, a lot of the uh, technical specs or performance issues uh, that we run into on the database issue on schedulers and so on and so forth. And obviously we are a small group that was running uh, our projects now trying to support this as well, kind of on a side. Uh, and we don't have the software engineering manpower and expertise that IBM has. Um, we also starting to run into not just our local, uh, call it Canadian and local Toronto problems, but also global problems with, uh, for example, from starting war in Ukraine, uh, a lot of uh, projects are using uh, reagents, for example, for validation from uh, companies that are in Kiev, and obviously that was already delayed. Inflation that resulted from all of the issues with the war, uh, from fuel and so on. We had a lot of volunteers that said that they are downgrading a number of servers that will be running from their basement due to the electricity costs and so on and so forth. Uh, other aspect was that obviously science moves through waves and uh, we had pause of some of the projects because they have been doing validations, mass childhood, uh, tube TB and also open pandemics which obviously means that less computation, less work units are available for the volunteers. And that kind of trickles down or adds to these other uh, challenges that be on, an, on a back end. Interestingly, uh, many countries, including uh, Netherlands, has similar system than Canada, that there is a, a kind of high performance computing infrastructure that is national and then institutions have their own setup. And uh, Africa Info Project is running into storage issues with the call it a federal uh, setup. So similar as us, uh, kind of trying to solve how can you run on a limited capacity without with limited funding. Um, so moving from where we are now to the future, uh, one of the definite challenges is uh, kind of finalizing the backend. And as actually we speak, uh, one of our 
RAID controllers uh, on the storage died this morning. And so we ran into a problems both in terms of the website and uh, and uh, uh, Boeing server. Uh, luckily, through the friends, and you can call it almost friends and family, uh, we we identified a potential spare one that is being uh, replaced, and hopefully we will start running again. Uh, so searching for partners, so we can actually resolve our really hardware issues, if you will, and also uh, expand the team. So we don't kind of try to run 100% of the research, but at the same time, 100% of supporting the world community grid and expand on the science and education, which will follow because we cannot really start new projects when we still uh, have issues on the back end. Uh, it was already mentioned, the, the kind of initiatives to try to run or start projects easier, uh, run more projects easier and so on. Uh, which definitely is of interest. And Dylan will have some uh, more updates on it later on. But also one of the things that would be of interest and we had even during the time when IBM was running it, there were a lot of questions about calculating credit between different machines, different projects, uh, GPU versus CPU and so on. And uh, there is a great page on the, on the Berkeley Boeing uh, that has in a sense comparison of credit calculation across different projects and it's actually quite interesting how, say, World Community Grid, uh, which is a relatively diverse set of projects, compares to the other uh, more specific projects. And that would be something also of uh, uh, interest to kind of see how to resolve, because it seems to be very dear uh, to the volunteers, and we really don't have much experience in it, or it's, it's kind of not trivial to solve fully. Uh, in terms of expanding funding, in a sense, everything is on a table from federal to provincial to foreign uh, government funding, but also more and more foundation philanthropy and uh, hopefully ideally uh, corporate partnership. Obviously, uh, IBM uh, for-profit organization had a different budget than we have in order to run this kind of operation. But luckily, one of the interesting thing is that Open Zika project, which was run at the time when 100% IBM ran World Community Grid, but recently we were uh, reconnected with the uh, with the team, and actually this afternoon I have a call with uh, with Carolina Andrade, uh, the lead PI on this project from Brazil. And uh, just uh, at the end of last year, they had an excellent paper that basically highlighted the importance of uh, this kind of community high-performance computing for screening for drugs and identifying uh, two possible candidates after basically two, three years of uh, optimization in a lab that are moving forward and are very uh, likely to be uh, really useful drugs for, for Zika in this case. So it really kind of highlights what was discussed earlier by Marcus and uh, Alexi and also obviously David, that uh, these publications hopefully will ramp up support not only among the volunteers, but also funding agencies and also volunteers. So it's important to uh, kind of bring them forward, I think, by all of the projects, because uh, in a sense, we can, we are in it together. Uh, the more people will be interested, every project will have more uh, competing done. Um, so one of the things we have been planning for a long time, but again, as I said, uh, we have to wait until we solve the initial kind of until we have a proper foundation before we start building the house on uh, on these new ideas. It's new projects, and uh, we have already some that we want to start. Uh, at the beginning, we want to run it on the our mapping cancer marker and uh, open pandemics code. So basically, for optimizing signatures or biomarkers and for drug screen. Uh, for arthritis and Parkinson disease. Then we want to expand into other cancers, viruses. But importantly, again, uh, with this company from Kingston Distributive, uh, we are also working on an easier way of onboarding projects that would enable uh, kind of broader participation and maybe for a shorter period of time, because that's definitely one of the uh, challenges with the World Community Grid is that because it takes quite a while to start a new project, first of all, it's only one to two projects that IBM has been starting per year, but also limited number of projects that can start because it doesn't make sense if somebody needs uh, one month of computation to spend three months of preparing the project. So kind of, uh, it, it, it's going to be interesting expansion in this direction. Uh, on the right side, those figures uh, kind of highlight also an interesting aspect across all of the projects that World Grid was running since 2004. And the bigger uh, and the more yellow the bubbles are, the more computation has been done in a given year. 
And obviously it's, it's an interesting ecosystem because it depends on what is the project in terms of the topic, also what platform it runs onto, uh, but also what else is happening on a grid. Uh, so some of the things, uh, for example, in uh, 21, uh, we benefited greatly because there was reduction of other projects, which means that more computation could have been done on ours. Uh, the open pandemics uh, helped also because they moved from CPU to GPU version, which kind of enabled more CPU computation on the other for the other projects and so on. Uh, what we also want to expand is uh, outreach, and I will have some slide at the end uh, showing that we already have two high schools working with us, and hopefully more will be joining. And uh, as was mentioned, interest in uh, implementing these Boeing code uh, libraries that we can run existing projects faster and easier, like the mapping cancer markers or, or, or uh, uh, docking for drug discovery. And importantly, uh, which again is uh, related to some funding and uh, both in terms of infrastructure and in terms of uh, personnel is having a knowledge portal of all of the data that has been generated over 18 years at the World Community Grid. And the challenge is that I still have a crate of hard drives uh, that we received from IBM, and we are still waiting for a place where we can actually put it in and start organizing into some meaningful knowledge rep rep repository. Um, in terms of uh, uh, projects uh, on the left side, it's kind of total, uh, but obviously total is skewed by how many years a given project is running. So uh, per year average is uh, on the right side, and it still nicely shows that um, uh, there are certain types of projects mostly related to cancer and to viruses uh, that really resonate with volunteers, and those projects seem to get a uh, lion's share of uh, uh, computing support, at least on a world community grid. Now, one of the other uh, kind of interesting thing is that we had obviously the, the call it the transition, which is not ideal term for uh, moving from IBM to academic setting, uh, a lot of challenges, and you can see the decline of uh, number of run times. But this number obviously is not only that there was uh, overall decline of number of uh, volunteers and machines, but also because there was fewer work units available for some of the projects. So it's kind of combination of multiple things that kind of shows. But what is really encouraging is that uh, finally in 2023, uh, the curve is uh, hopefully bouncing back and it's going to start increasing. Uh, on the teraflops, which is an interesting number uh, we get from statistics, uh, although I, I actually, I'm not 100% sure why there was such a jump in peak in 21, but what is important is that where we are now is roughly where we have been, uh, I mean, World Community Grid has been over the last few years before pandemic. So hopefully that also is a, is a decent time. Uh, the, the last highlight is uh, kind of, as a scientist, I have to be reminded that it's not just a technical or scientific project, it's actually a social uh, uh, project. And what this really highlights is that we have volunteers that are never on a team or they are on multiple teams or single team. And it really shows that the kind of, Humans are, 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 are kind of animals. They like to work together. And if they are parts of the team, they contribute more, if you will. And so it's, it's really kind of gamifying it for the volunteers is uh, one of the ways that hopefully we'll be able to raise uh, the number of support going forward. Now, it's obviously not one-to-one. -one. Um, this is a relatively busy uh, number of uh, kind of visuals. But what it really highlights is, first of all, how, it's, how the computation increases for individual projects on our upper left. But the other thing over the years, uh, Windows, Linux, Mac, and Android uh, computation. And it's relatively stable in terms of the proportions over the last years uh, before pandemic. And on the upper right, uh, it shows the current statistics actually from this year. And what is interesting is to note is that while we have a lot more Windows users than for any other platform, number of hosts is still best for Linux. And makes sense because obviously these are usually servers or, or data centers that, that support the computation. So when you think of it in terms of uh, creating more computation, on a social side, yes, we want to go after Windows users, but it's usually one-to-one -one mapping in terms of the user and machine. Versus on a Linux, there is a definitely bigger bank for a for kind of effort of getting those kind of users uh, into computation. 
Other thing, uh, and this is uh, uh, kind of expanding into GPU aspect. Uh, we were one of the, or actually I think the first World Community Grid project that was running uh, GPU and CPU versions. And it significantly show how much more you can do within a period of time. It's also different uh, subgroup of users that are very much GPU oriented as opposed to CPU oriented. But another thing, which is on the right side, uh, and we haven't had a chance to dive into it more, uh, we stumbled it when IBM was still running the grid and they didn't have the uh, proper answer at the time either. And then obviously transition and COVID and so on happened. So uh, we, we didn't dive into it more. But what this shows on our project, Mapping Cancer Marker, is number of errors that you get depending on, a, not only on the platform, uh, Linux or or I mean, operating system, Linux or, or Windows, uh, which version of it, 64, uh, 32 bit and so on. But also uh, we have uh, more detail in terms of the AMD versus Intel and so on. And it's actually striking uh, because this basically shows that uh, we should not run these kind of calculations on any uh, machines that run Windows 10 uh, because it's markedly different in terms of the error uh, than from other machines. Obviously it needs more, uh, kind of diving into. And uh, I will be quiet and Dylan will continue with the final part. I hope. Dylan? I'm not sure if he's uh, muted by the organizer. All right. OK, thanks. Um... Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so just going into um, what we have configured on the back end for the World Community Grid. Uh, so we have essentially a two main software categories um, or categories of software components, the first being Boink uh, and the Boink database, which is hosted in MariaDB. Uh, and the second uh, essentially being the work unit management uh, pipeline for downloading batches from researchers, uh, packaging them up, maintaining state in the Boink database and uh, dealing with problems that might arise or shortages or uh, an influx of demand, let's say for a particular project, uh, just keeping everything um, allocated uh, smoothly in terms of resources. Um, so all of this is hosted in uh, a private cloud, and we manage that through an OpenStack uh, dashboard and set of APIs. Um, we have full access and we tend to bootstrap these servers with uh, Ansible playbooks and the build and deploy process uh, is managed through GitLab CI and we use Ansible playbooks for that as well. Um, so the custom components that you see here with the stripe lines going through them on the Boink side of the back end, the validators and the simulators, um, these are implemented for each scientific application and uh, run on behalf of researchers. The Aurora Meso scheduler keeps those running uh, and all of the Boink daemons running as services. And if they die or something comes up then tries to deal with the problem uh, without manual intervention. Um, now the bleed over there of the Stripe portion is to indicate that there is some customization in the database um, that goes beyond what is conventionally uh, thought to be something that you should customize um, through Boink and, and a little bit more on that later. Um, okay. So, yeah, I think uh, the one thing I wanted to mention, if we could go back for one second there to the, the previous slide. Um, so we do have a bit of a long-term plan to replace the work unit management uh, components to some degree with something a little more familiar. Um, and just given the declarative nature of Mesos and Aurora, uh, hopefully moving to a PubSub model um, and a more familiar scheduler uh, software, which we use Slurm for uh, other installations, other sites um, at the lab. So we do have some plans to modify this infrastructure over time, but just given the, uh, the lack of available uh, resources, human resources and resources in general, uh, the, the date for the start of that work is uh, still TBD. Okay. Uh, so for our website at worldcommunitygrid.org, um, there does need to be a synchronization because there's two different databases. We don't use the Boink database uh, directly 
um, for the website user data. Um, so the profiles there are stored in a separate database and the way that these two databases uh, keep each other in sync um, is just via message passing. Uh, so when uh, a user updates preferences on the Boink manager, for example, or on the website, um, then messages are passed back and forth. And this way uh, we can keep the two in sync and the user can uh, adjust their preferences and uh, select and deselect projects and what they wanna do with their computing resources uh, through both interfaces and, and have that reflected um, on the other end. So just as an example, of how that works. If we could go two slides forward, the slides are slightly out of order. So just two forward. Yeah, so this would be the uh, the workflow for adding a new user, um, which you can see there, the user would manage through the point client, uh, the addition of this device to the world community grid. Uh, this interacts with the Boink system on our back end in the usual way. And then uh, what happens in order for this device to uh, get added to their profile on the website so that they can see statistics so that they can uh, actually monitor the results coming in from that device is that a message will be placed on a queue that is subscribed to um, by the, uh, the software that runs the website and that is going to uh, forward a message to the um, database for the website which that way is going to in real time synchronize uh, the, the devices. So we're currently having a, an issue with this pipeline which is unfortunate, we're trying to resolve it. We're very close. We've isolated, uh, isolated the problem to the queue, uh, to the message broker. So hopefully we'll have this, um, this fixed soon, but this is uh, how we keep the two databases in sync um, in the back end. And we do have uh, the idea that in the future, it might make more sense to simply have one database instance um, from which we manage uh, both, both of these um, aspects, the front end and the back end. Okay, if we could go back one slide now. Okay, so something interesting uh, to talk about in terms of Boink uh, and the World Community Grid is the uh, Boink server version that we run is not actually tracking um, upstream the Boink server version that is hosted on GitHub. Uh, and in fact, it's quite out of date. So this is based on a version um, that would be something close to what was available in September of 2012. Uh, and over time, many new features that were deemed required by the World Community Grid were implemented uh, and features that were deemed useful were backported in. And some features such as uh, consent, for example, um, are actually implemented in a reduced way that, uh, for example, for uh, Grid Republic, um, does not provide the uh, API, uh, the, the expected uh, function in some of the PHP scripts that uh, one might use to display user statistics. Um, so th this is a feature that currently we're trying to backport into our server version uh, just so that we can provide that functionality. And in general, that workflow just seems clumsy and, and unnecessary. And given the, uh, you know, the lack of resources that we have available and the fact that Boink is in an actively developed open source project. Uh, we really would have an interest over time if we could just go two slides forward now. Uh, in the long term, uh, trying to do the work of upgrading the Boink server version, um, which speaking to the folks at IBM during the transition, they would consider more of a migration just because it's been so long and there would be uh, so many things to go through and ensure um, would be the same after the upgrade is done between the new Boink server version that would be something very similar to what is currently available on GitHub uh, and uh, our existing uh, setup, which does make some modifications to the database tables, uh, which does do things slightly differently to accomplish the same goals as features that were implemented since 2012 until now and has many changes that were specific to the World Community Grid uh, so the, the process, and we do have a document that's somewhat outdated, but at least it exists uh, from IBM and some uh, materials from them on how they were thinking about going about this. Uh, but of course, given the high estimation, even for their team, of how long this would take, um, and the process being uh, somewhat deliberate, we'd have to go back through all the features that have been added that seem different between existing uh, Boink server on GitHub, GitHub and ours. Uh, and slowly submit uh, perhaps pull requests for anything that we don't think we can live without. Uh, but 
hopefully over time, I, I think this would be a thing to, uh, to discuss and, and talk about with the Boeing community. Um, if there are features that uh, you know of that the World Community Grid has that you'd be interested in us contributing, um, I think this is a collaboration that, that could be useful and it, it certainly would help us a great deal uh, to be tracking the uh, Boink upstream um, as it's actively developed. So, And that concludes, and uh, similarly as Marcus, uh, I like the QR codes so he can get to the lab and to the World Community Grid web page. Thank you, everybody. I'm sorry that we were a little bit longer over time. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Um, let's maybe try and keep the questions short as we've fallen a fair bit behind our, our schedule, but uh, does, don't want to have zero questions. Does anybody have? That was a lot to digest. Does anybody have any any quick questions? Uh, absent any hands up, I'm going to just, uh, um, I guess Warren is saying he has a question here in chat. So uh, please use the hands up. Uh, it's in the bottom of your bar, reaction, raise hand. Um, but Warren, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, really quick, um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that you guys obviously have a lot of customizations and some of those are coming from IBM historically. Um, simply put, I was just wondering if the, a lot of those customizations um, are any of them looking to be open sourced and provided to the to the Boink source code as enhancements or options for what to do, or is that all proprietary uh, customizations? Um, sure, the answer probably is not all is proprietary, but uh, I'm not sure if Dylan would be easy easy to kind of digest or, or separate what is private, what is what is not. Uh, obviously, we, we would need to double check with the IBM so we don't release into the public something that they will then snap us on. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it should be a, a relatively straightforward distinction. Um, it, so I think it would be a case by case uh, if if there are features that the community would be interested um, in having submitted as a pull request and reviewing and, and adding uh, to Boink upstream, then I think we'd have to do it case by case. Uh, having looked at and reviewed the list um, as it stood a few years ago, I think at this point when they reviewed uh, the amount of work that it would take and made that initial estimate of three or four months for their team, um, I, I think most of it does not look proprietary or like it would be uh, in any way disadvantageous to us to contribute back. So that, that was certainly um, the, the overall theme there was that most of this would be uh, something to first of all distinguish what is actually different at this point because it's been such a long time. Uh, what do we implement that accomplishes the same goal in just a slightly different way? Um, and trying to uh, understand what we can simply get rid of and what might be useful to contribute back to Boink so that you know that way we're uh, we're all building um, from the same source code, and uh, we're working together to uh, include needed features and and uh, maintain. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. 